Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqeel. The Deputy Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, Minister of Presidential Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan received the Asian Football Confederation, the AFC President, and FIFA First Vice President Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa during his current visit to the United Arab Emirates. During the meeting, they reviewed the orientations of the Asian Football Confederation aimed at promoting the development process in Asian football and upgrading the various components of the football system of the National Federation's members. His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed welcomed the President of the Asian Football Confederation, praising his efforts in serving Asian football and appreciating the role of the Continental Federation in advancing the march of the sports in various fields. For his part, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed for the hospitality and warm welcome, noting the distinguished status of the United Arab Emirates in the Asian football field and affirming AFC's appreciation of the UAE's contributions to the success of the Continental Championships, the most recent one being the successful hosting of the 2019 Asia, rather Asian Cup Finals. The Bahrain ambassador to the United States, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, visited Lockheed Martin Corporation where he inspected the airline's F-16 production line which will produce the first F-16 Block 70 aircraft for the Royal Bahrain Air Force within the framework of the agreement to purchase combat aircraft signed during the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to Washington in 2017 as part of the Bahrain Defense Forces Development Program. In his speech, the ambassador expressed Bahrain's pride and strategic partnership with the United States in the defense and security fields as part of the joint keenness to maintain international peace and security. For her part, the Vice President and General Manager of Lockheed Martin Corporation, Bridget Lauderdale, noted that the partnership between Bahrain and the group began over 40 years ago, highlighting that the kingdom is the first country in the Gulf to have an F-16 and the first country in the world to have the developed F-16 Block 70. Senator Lindsey Graham also noted that Bahrain is a strategic partner to the U.S. Between our two nations run long and deep. It is due to this relationship that we are celebrating a further success in our collaborations with the construction of this new F-16s fleet. Today also marks another worthy occasion, for in Bahrain, it is Martyr's Day. Like your Memorial Day, today commemorates those men and women in uniform who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty to their country. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has made our relationship with the United States a top priority, fully reciprocated by those in Washington who share the recognition that, as I've said before, peace in the region is peace far beyond the region. It is the shared recognition of this belief that has propelled our friendship far beyond rhetoric. In addition to the U.S. Navy's Fifth Fleet calling Bahrain its home for the past 30 years, joint exercises such as Operation Sentinel, CTF-151, CTF-152, and the powerful Defense Cooperation Agreement are testaments to the continued work that our forces perform hand in hand on everything from anti-piracy to stemming of radicalism and terror. These joint actions also underscore the criticality of seamless interoperability. To this point, Bahrain is all too proud to share a fruitful history with Lockheed Martin as well. In addition to providing platforms and training, assuring such operational synergy, Lockheed Martin's dedication to the kingdom has been evident by their years of loyal participation at the Bahrain Air Show and continued presence. I want to extend my congratulations to all of you on this important occasion. Ambassador Al Khalifa, the Kingdom of Bahrain has been an important ally in the region for over 70 years, and the United States is grateful for our important relationship. I cannot think of a better aircraft for you to purchase than the F-16 Block 70s 
made by the great folks at Lockheed Martin in Greenville, South Carolina. These jets have been the world's most successful, combat-proven, fourth-generation fighter. And it's such an exciting day to give respect to our great ally, Bahrain. I assured Ambassador Khalifa that when he arrived in Greenville, he would find out how friendly and positive the people are of South Carolina about the investments that are being made by, by Bahrain. And I was in Manama uh, just last month, and oh, what a great country it is. What a great ally they are of the United States. The Fifth Fleet has been there for over 70 years, over 100 years of relationships with Bahrain. The non-resident ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, held a reception and luncheon in The Hague, Netherlands, on the occasion of Bahrain's National Day celebrations. The ceremony was attended by a number of senior officials, including the director of the Middle East and North Africa Develop Department at the Dutch Foreign Ministry, the Director General of OPCW, and the Secretary General of the PCA, a large number of ambassadors and diplomats accredited to The Hague, academics, journalists, and Dutch government officials. The ambassador pointed out the importance that Bahrain holds in strengthening the existing communication with the Dutch government, especially in light of The Hague hosting a headquarters for a large number of international organizations. He noted the embassy's constant endeavors to support cooperation and facilitate all necessary measures with a view to multiplying the economic field to double the trade exchange to reach the aspirations of the two governments and achieve the common interests of the two friendly countries with emphasizing coordination between the two countries in regional and international forums. The ambassador also emphasized the achievements made in Bahrain since the accession of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, especially in the areas of empowering women politically and economically, supporting youth and strengthening the kingdom's leadership role in combating trafficking in persons, in addition to the Kingdom of Bahrain's pioneering experience in the region to promote tolerance between religions. The Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia held a celebration on the occasion of Bahrain's National Day. The Ambassador of Bahrain to Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, held a reception in the presence of the Governor of Riyadh region, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Bandar bin Abdulaziz, a number of ministers, senior officials, ambassadors and businessmen, diplomats and media professionals. Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa delivered a speech on this occasion in which he welcomed His Royal Highness the Governor of Riyadh region and the audience and extended greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The ambassador also expressed congratulations to the Bahraini people, wishing Bahrain progress, security and safety under the leadership of His Majesty the King. He expressed pride in the positive results achieved to consolidate the approach of shura and democracy in the country, the strengthening of constitutional institutions, integration and cooperation between the three authorities. The ambassador stated that Bahrain's stances on the Gulf Arab regional and international issues are clear and firm stances and are based on general principles of mutual respect, understanding, cooperation, coordination and common interests. The Embassy of Bahrain to the United Arab Emirates held a reception on the occasion of Bahrain's celebrations of its National Day. In the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed and Nahyan, a number of their Highnesses and Excellencies, Ministers and Ambassadors, and a large number of senior officials, media personnel, diplomatic corps, finance, business, and military personnel, as well as Bahraini citizens present in the United Arab Emirates, who were received by the Ambassador of Bahrain to the UAE, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and members of the embassy. The Bahraini ambassador conveyed his sincere congratulations to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, praising the celebrations of the National Days coinciding with Martyrs' Day in appreciation for the sacrifices made by the martyrs of the country for the sake of the kingdom and the Arab nation as a whole. 
Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah stated that the Bahraini Emirati relations have been deep rooted for decades and are characterized by the distinguished relations between the two countries and their wise leaderships. The ambassador also reviewed the accomplishments that have been achieved in the kingdom at all levels since the reform project of His Majesty the King, as well as the historical transformations Bahrain witnessed since His Majesty's accession to the throne. At the end of his speech, the ambassador extended his sincere thanks and appreciation to the UAE for their appreciation to the people of Bahrain and to all attendees for their participation and the joys of the kingdom on its national day. The ambassador of Bahrain to Tunisia, Ibrahim Mahmoud Ahmed, held a reception and a luncheon on the occasion of Bahrain's national holidays. The ambassador extended greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The ceremony was attended by Tunisia's Minister of Tourism and Traditional Industries, a delegate representing the Minister of Transportation, along with various officials from the Tunisian Foreign Ministry and other invitees from Arab and non-Arab countries, all of whom congratulated Bahrain on the occasion and praised Bahrain's development in all fields, which is now a model to be emulated in the region. The Ambassador of Bahrain to Russia, Ambassador Ahmed Abdurrahman al saati held a reception on the occasion of Bahrain's National Day celebrations in commemoration of the establishment of the modern Bahraini state as an Arab and Muslim country founded by Ahmed al fatih in 1783, the anniversary of its full membership in the United Nations and the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. The ceremony was attended by Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Sergei Vershinin, members of the Russian Parliament, senior officials of the federal government, representatives of the Republic of Russia in Moscow, a number of Arab and foreign ambassadors and diplomats accredited in Moscow, the first deputy of the Shura Council for Muftis for the Muslims of Russia, and businessmen, including a large number of political, cultural, and media officials who congratulated the leadership, government, and people of Bahrain on this national occasion. In his speech, the ambassador reviewed the development of relations between Bahrain and Russia, noting that next year will be the celebration of the two countries' 30th anniversary of diplomatic relations. For its part, the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Sergei Vershinin, congratulated Bahrain on its National Day, praising the wise policy of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and various international issues that contribute to the promotion of peace, security and cooperation between the countries and people of the world. Adding that Moscow highly values the close relations between the leaderships of the two countries with its deep historical roots dating back many years. The Embassy of Bahrain in New Delhi held a reception on the occasion of Bahrain's national celebrations. The reception was attended by the guests of honor, the Union Minister of State for Home Affairs, J. Kishan Reddy, ambassadors of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Oman, Egypt and Yemen, in addition to a large number of ambassadors of Arab and friendly countries, as well as a group of senior officials from India. Upon the directives of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, the RCO, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Secretary General of RCO, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, participated in the first Global Refugee Forum organized by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in partnership with the Swiss government in Geneva. Dr. Assay delivered the Kingdom's speech conveying to the organizers the Kingdom's greetings and expressing appreciation for organizing the forum for its importance in preserving human dignity and supporting the victims of conflicts and wars. He reviewed the Kingdom's experience in providing humanitarian aid through professional administrative and specific, rather scientific means that preserved the human dignity of those in need and through the support of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He highlighted His Majesty's strategy and humanitarian principle, which stipulates that the development of states is not measured only by what it provides to its citizens, but also by the assistance it provides to those in need outside its geographical borders. Dr. Assay suggested encouraging children and young students to participate in philanthropic and humanitarian work, 
as well as instilling the values of tolerance and moderation in them. Viva Bahrain announced a change of its corporate identity to STC Bahrain as a world-class digital leader providing innovative services and platforms to customers in the MENA region. The brand evolution re rather reiterates STC's vision of leading the change and paving the way into the future for generations to come. The new identity was unveiled at a special launch event attended by STC Bahrain employees as well as media professionals and social media influencers. Speaking at the event, CEO of STC Bahrain, engineer Nizar Benabila, stressed that rebranding as STC Bahrain will further contribute to achieving the company's vision to lead the digital transformation in Bahrain by focusing on growth and new unconventional paths and providing digital solutions that enrich the lives of its customers as well as providing innovative services and products that enable the business sector to operate more effectively and economically. STC Bahrain added an important milestone to its record of achievements by launching the first FJ network in the kingdom. This was part of its ongoing initiatives to become the kingdom's leading digital enabler for various industries as per Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. Celebrating the launch of its new identity, STC Bahrain introduced exclusive offers for subscribers for a limited time period, which includes a special international roaming offer without any fees charged to customers traveling to Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Also, STC Bahrain postpaid and prepaid customers can benefit from free calls when calling Saudi Arabia and Kuwait for a limited time offer. The launch of STC Bahrain coincided with the STC Group's launch of its new corporate identity, representing the new step in the group's evolution and transformation to become the regional digital champion that offers a an unified customer experience under one brand. First of all, thank you so much for giving us the chance. I think during the last nine years, STC Bahrain delivered a lot to Bahrain and its customers. And to move forward, it's a time to change. And this change, not just only in our brand and our logo, it's further than that. That's why today we, we launched our offers that we will provide our customer with a better services. And one of the most important element that we are coming out with, which is our digital. That's why we enhance all our touch points and all our digital channels and all the channels that our customers, they can have in a contact with our company, today is digitalized. And inshallah, moving forward, definitely will provide them with a better services. This came out from our brand and the values for our brand.